Hello, I'm meteorologist Jeff Renner, and welcome. Again, we're getting set for the third in our series of sound conversations at the Seattle Aquarium that is scheduled for May 2nd, beginning at 7 o'clock in the evening. More on all of that, but I want to introduce our guest, who is going to be only the first guest to return by popular demand to the sound conversation surveys, and it's no wonder. Ken Balcom, who is uh, head of the Center for Whale Research based up on San Juan Island. Ken, first of all, Thank you so much for joining us here and also for Sound Conversations. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's my pleasure. I'm looking forward to this. Looks like a sunny day up there on San Juan Island. Yes, and I want to thank you for that, too. It's just <laughs> Don't start a rumor there. <laughs> Ken, let me ask you, I just know from personal experience, not having the degree of exposure or expertise that you do, there's sort of a magic when you get around orcas. Uh, what was your first interaction like with orcas and what impact did it have on you? Uh, my first interaction in this area was uh, under contract to the National Marine Fisheries Service to count the whales in this region and it was April 6, 1976. I found uh, K&L pods out west of Freshwater Bay in the Strait of Juan de Fuca and was just hooked ever since. What is the status of what we would call the resident population of orcas in and around the Puget Sound Salish Sea area? Our resident killer whales in this area, called orcas, are uh, numbering at present somewhere around 84, maybe 83, the low 80s. Uh, they were 70 whales when we started in 1976. Is the uh, resident population in good shape? Are you feeling optimistic or are there some reasons for concern? Well, uh, I'm afraid I must uh, have some concern for them. They, their population has been going up and down, mostly tracking the Chinook or uh, King Salmon populations, not only from Puget Sound, but for the whole coast from California to uh, northern BC, which uh, if we have poor years like we have this year coming, we have very poor survival with the whales. So uh, I'm some very concerned about this year. And I think by doing some of the studies you've done with whales, you have seen some health problems, even in those that you're able to uh, follow and survey on a little bit closer basis, aren't you? Uh, yes, we uh, have actually documented uh, the loss of body condition, the peanut head syndrome, we call it, uh, where uh, they just look like a, a horse in a field that's ready to die, just skin and bones. And we've talked also in the past, there are some other threats facing the health of orcas in and around this area. Uh, what do those threats include? Well, the three threats that were identified in the recovery plan uh, were contaminants, prey resources, and uh, sort of vessel interaction. You know, is there uh, increasing human use of these waters that's denying them some critical habitat? And that's something we're going to be talking about on May 2nd, is not only the nature of the problems facing the orcas, what we've learned about their behavior and what that signals in terms of the health of the overall marine ecosystem, but what each of us can do. So again, that's going to be Thursday evening, May 2nd. I'm looking very much forward to having you as my guest, Ken. So tickets are available through the Seattle Aquarium website. The program begins at 7 o'clock. We'll hope that you join Ken and that you join me. Ken, thank you so much, and go up and enjoy some of that sunshine on San Juan Island. Uh, you're very welcome, and I'm watching for the whales right now.